في هذا الشارع في لندن تختبئ أسرار صغيرة وتحديدا في هذا الدكان الذي يدعى جون لوب Sometimes shoes that we make may be considered haute couture by the wearers um, because we, but we make anything that a customer wants. That's what we're up to. We're not producing models like the fashion houses to sell to people. We're producing simply what they want. Yes, it's been described as the most beautiful shop in the world. Well, that's a nice compliment. Um, it's, uh, in a way, it's a bit of... Uh, history here. These, the, the, what you see around you goes back a well, hundred years probably and nothing has changed. So for that reason it's, um, it's become rather attractive. Now we're in this shop in St. James's Street and we've been here now 50, 50 years. Um, we've been in this street for a, over a hundred years. He was actually a farmer in Cornwall originally, born into a farming family. But he had an accident. We're told he fell off a donkey and couldn't continue to be a farmer, so he was apprenticed to the local bootmaker. He went to Australia. It was the time of the gold rush. He thought it better to make boots for the miners rather than try and find gold. And he found that a good thing to do. He was successful. He started a business in Sydney and finally came back to London. We tend to make a lot of classic shoes, I must say, because they go on and on. People, they're practical, they look nice, and uh, people like them. And of course, we, as I was talking about exotic leathers, crocodile is rather nice, um, rather expensive, but very nice. Okay, well this is the first part of the measurements. We just take an outline of the foot. And that's it, that's all the measurements for the outline. Around the foot you go and just take three simple measurements. You can take a measurement and make a little nick, then around the instep, around the heel, and there we have it. It's not always so noticeable, but if somebody wears ready-made shoes that are particularly uncomfortable and they have a pair that made that for them, they notice the dramatic difference. We use a wide selection of leathers, uh, in upper leathers particularly of course, because there are different grains and colours and thicknesses and different varieties of, of animal. And they come from, I suppose, all over the world where they're produced sometimes. They're often tanned in, in Europe. More and more we have trained our own people um, because there are very few firms that do this work now. Um, when I joined there were quite a lot and as they closed so there were people who did the work who came to join us. قوالب أقدام شاء أصحابها أن يدفعوا مبالغ مالية عالية ليحصلوا على حذاء مريح. King George V we have there, the Duke of Windsor, Emperor of Ethiopia, not so many emperors around these days, the King of Thailand, King Farouk of Egypt, Randolph Churchill, we're talking about Winston Churchill, that was his son. Amy Johnson, an aviator, she might be a little bit known. Some of the more famous ones in recent years we've managed to keep, Frank Sinatra for instance. He's still very well known, still heard of course. <coughs> Lord Olivier, perhaps uh, people don't know him so well, but he was a very, very good actor, one of the famous actors. Lord Olivier, Duke, Duke Ellington, another famous name there. أوروبا الأرستقراطية لا زلت تجدها في أماكن مثل هذه. حيث تتلمس الوجه المرفه للازمنه الغابره The shoes of course are made entirely by hand throughout. Uh, the quality I think there's no doubt about that because the crafts that 
men that, and women that work on these shoes take a great pride in what they do. Um, the elegance, well that comes with, again, if it's made properly and you've got a proper last, you can produce an elegant looking shoe. It's to do with proportion and shape and, uh, and, and so it uh, it's all goes together. You've actually got the shoe completed. It stays on the last for a while, the last is taken out, it's polished, laces are put in, and it's ready for the customer. Mm -hmm.